the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Government, the Liberals have no climate plan. What they have is a tax plan that has failed to reach a single solitary environmental target that they have set. Meanwhile, gas prices have hit $2.40 a litre in Vancouver. This is the same city which is the third most overpriced real estate market on earth. In other words, people can't afford to drive, they can't afford homes, and with food prices rising faster than in 40 years, they can't afford to eat either. Will the government show some compassion for British Columbians and Canadians and cancel its plan to triple the tax? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives don't have a climate plan. All they have is a plan to take away $1,000 checks from families in Alberta and Saskatchewan. And you know what? They don't have a plan to make life more affordable for Canadians either. All they have is a plan to drain our pensions and our EI. Our government does have a fiscally responsible plan to support Canadians with affordability, and we have a plan to act on the climate. Canadians know that, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The only ones draining EI of money is this government. They want to raid the EI fund for $10 billion. Take the money that Canadians pay in EI taxes and spend it on everything but EI. Yep. The minister admits she's going to raise EI taxes by $2.5 billion starting on January 1st, with Canadians facing the highest inflation in 40 years, just inflation, with Canadians struggling to feed themselves. What is this government thinking by raising taxes on paychecks? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when you look past all the huffing and puffing, all the strutting and posturing, here's what's happened this week. The Conservatives have done a U-turn and accepted our targeted and fiscally responsible plan to help 11 million vulnerable Canadian families with GST rebates of nearly $500. Now it's time for the Conservatives to drop their utterly reckless scheme to drain our pensions and EI and to support our plan to help Canadians pay their rent and take their kids to the dentist. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The government has been draining the paychecks and pocketbooks of Canadians. Just this week, the Angus Reid Institute published a poll showing that 51% of Canadians are struggling to eat. In Canada, a G7 country, the majority of people cannot afford groceries. That is seven years of this Liberal government. They're, Canadians are out of money. This government is out of touch. Why won't they cancel their tax hikes so Canadians can afford to eat? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. The people are, who are out of touch are a party that believes it's a good idea to slash our pensions and to undermine the EI system. You know what else is out of touch? It's out of touch not to have a plan to act on climate. And you know why that's out of touch, Mr. Speaker? Because our customers clients, the U.S. and the E.U., they are taking climate action. They will only buy Canadian products if we take climate action, too. Yeah. Well, Leader of the Opposition. Madam, Mr. Speaker, the Minister totally ignored the question. 51% of Canadians cannot afford to eat. Food bank use has tripled and hits, uh, hits record every single month, according to the Daily Bread Association. Students are living in homeless shelters while they study. This is Canada, after seven years of this Liberal government getting worse now under this costly coalition. Will they wake up to what's going on in this country and cancel their heartless tax hikes? Here, here. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government will take no lessons from the Conservatives when it comes to protecting vulnerable Canadians. 
Our government has lifted hundreds of thousands of Canadian children out of poverty with the Canada Child Benefit. We have lifted seniors out of poverty by increasing the OAS and by reversing the ruthless, cruel, conservative pension cuts. You know who owes Canadians an apology, Mr. Speaker? It is this new Conservative leader who recklessly advised them to destroy their life savings by investing in Bitcoin.